before we eat it, before we drink it, we must stop and ask, will that defile my body? Will it glorify God? Now keep in mind, the campaign during the pestilence crisis, the Babylon sorceries, and uh, the pestilence crisis. The pestilence crisis was created for the Babylonian sorceries. Before you put that, uh, inject that into your body, did you ask, will it bring glory to God? Is it God's will for me to put that into my body? Now, let's move on. Go to the next passage, Romans 6, 13. We read, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness. Leave that on the screen. Yield your members as instruments of righteousness. So this is very clear based on those previous two passages that we look at here. We are not supposed to yield the bodies, the members of our bodies, unto uncleanness, unto righteousness. We have to pause and ask, will this glorify God the Father? Now let's move on. Notice what Spirit of Prophecy went on to tell us here. Volume 4, Spirit of Prophecy, 407. Satan works through the elements. This was a warning that was given to us. Also to garner his harvest of unprepared souls. He had studied the secret of the laboratories of nature, and he, Satan, uses all his power to control the elements as far as God allows, while appearing, that is Satan, while Satan appearing is appearing to the children of men as a great physician who can heal all their maladies, what will he do? He will bring disease and disaster until populous cities are reduced to ruin, and desolation. Let's pause there. So we see that Satan will bring a, a crisis as it was prophesied. A crisis that will cause disease, that would cause many to violate the health laws, that would lead many to put something into their body that will defile them that would bring about ultimately disaster or their destruction, as it says, until populous cities are reduced to ruin and desolation. The power that be has made it very, very clear way back in, for example, 2017, what the agenda was. That is to reduce, as Spirit Prophecy says here, to reduce populous cities into desolation. And how did they say, plan to do this? Silently, quietly. And what else did they say? Well, by coming up with a deadly taint, a deadly pestilence, and to cause many to inject something into their bodies, as it was also prophesied in Revelation 18.23. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceive. Jesus says in Matthew 24, there shall be wars and rumors of wars and pestilences. More than one pestilences. Pestilences, Jesus mentioned. Well, as it was prophesied, let's continue and finish this passage. He imparts, Satan imparts to the air a deadly tank and thousand perish. By the pestilence, these visitations are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. Destruction will be upon the inhabitants of the world. The beasts of the field will groan and the earth will languish. Well, notice on the screen with me. This is from the New York Post. We read, uh, this came out April 4th, 2024. Bird flu pandemic could be 100 times worse than the pestilence, scientists warn. Notice, 100 times worse than the pestilence, scientists, the so-called scientists, have warned. A bird flu, pandemic, with the potential to be 100 times worse than the pestilence, may be on the horizon 
after a rare human case was discovered in Texas. Experts have warned the H5N1 avian flu has spread rapidly since a new strain was detected in 2020. Notice, when was this detected? 2020, the same year of the Babylonian pestilence. Then it says, affecting wild birds in every state. Notice, in every state, all of the 50 states of the United States of America, they say. As well as in commercial poultry and backyard flocks. This is being brought to you by the same people who told us that we need uh, to stay home because of this deadly taint, because of this deadly pestilence. The same people who told you that we only need 15 days to uh, flatten the curve. The same people then uh, after those 15 days, they said, we need months, we need years. Now, in order for you to come, go back to society, you need to take the Babylonian sorceries, the same people. Now, they came up, they produce the so-called bird flu, which is what again? A hundred times worse than the pestilence that we dealt with during the year 2020, 2021, and part of 2022. I'm still dealing with the same problem today. This is fear mongering. My Bible tells me perfect love cast out all fear. Remember, Nebuchadnezzar promoted fear, instilled fear in the mind of the majority to cause them to bow down and to worship the image. That's how Nebuchadnezzar managed to get everybody to bow. How many did not bow? How many did not fall for that fear mongering? It was only three men, three young men. God needs young men today in these last days. Needs He needs shepherds in these last days that will stand fast, that will stand up to show, to be an example for, to the flock that this is not the time to be bowing down. This is bowing down to the wrong God. It's time to stand up, to be counted. How many of our preachers and even today that have monetized their channel and become uh, popular in a way where were they doing the pestilence we want to ask where were they well i'm gonna show you what uh, the kenhurst uh seven adventist church was doing and his and its preachers were doing during that time now we have another crisis among us, another shemdemic crisis. Remember those Bible pass uh, passages we read a moment ago. Those passages had tell told us that we should not yield to the fear, to the fear mongering. We should present our bodies as living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let me add another passage here, which is found in the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, and we're going to read verse 2 of the book of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, there the Bible says, after the apostle Paul says, to present our bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then he went on to say, now keep in mind, we as seven Adventists, God has given us the understanding of the message for this time, which goes along with the right arm of the third angel's message, which is the health message that he has given us. And it was not given us for when times are good. Jesus mentioned there shall be pestilences. Well, during those pestilences, we have to uphold the standard and promote the standard. Verse 2. And be not conformed, the Apostle Paul says, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. While the whole world were bowing down to the Babylonian sorceries, how many of those preachers today conform? Now I heard Ted Wilson is exposing the mark of the beast is exposing the Pope. Wait, where were Ted Wilson? Where was Ted Wilson during the pestilence crisis? 
It's a smoke screen, brothers and sisters. Double talk. Where was Ted Wilson doing the pestilence crisis? What was he promoting? Was it the health message? Or was he telling seven Adventists to conform to this world? When we were supposed to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, why? That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In a crisis, God will not accept compromise. He will only accept faithfulness. That's, that is the reason why Jesus says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Now, this crisis here, again, is to instill and promote fear to get all of us to comply, yea, even to bow down to the next Babylonian sorceries. Let's continue. Next article here on the screen from Daily Mail. We read, this could be 100 times worse than the pestilence. Bird flu warning from scientists who say half of infections with H5N1 in people are fatal as White House Quote unquote says it's monitoring the situation. Well, they created it. They're monitoring at the same time. Speaking at a briefing, virus researchers said that the H5N1 strain of bird flu may now be getting quote unquote dangerously close to triggering another pandemic. Multiple cases of the infection in a variety of mammals, including cows, What's the next animal here? Cats. That is a household pet animal. And more recently, who else? Humans are all raising the risk of the virus mutating. Ooh, it's a monster. It's mutating to become more. What's the next word? We've heard this before. Transmissible. Oh, brothers and sisters, we've heard those things before. So now you cannot trust your dog. You cannot trust your cats. Hey, you cannot trust another human being. Have we been there before? Have we heard those things before? While those things were happening, they happened back then, and now they are promoting this fear mongering. What was the position of the Adventist leaders? Did they tell us to be not conformed to the ways of the world, but be renewing? Renew your mind to Christ, stand up for Him. Don't bow to the image. Don't go for the fear mongering. This is what they were promoting. Then, as we see another crisis is upon us, they will promote the same thing. As it says, Adventist church leaders on the pestilence poison, on the poison mandates. Dr. Richard Hart, president of Loma Linda University Health, says studies keep showing that the poison are significantly effective, they say, to prevent quote-unquote severe disease, hospitalization, and destruction. Together, we can stop the pestilence sufferings and death. Let's continue saving lives. Meanwhile, brothers and sisters, notice on the screen with me this picture here. While our leaders were telling us to conform, to go along with the mandates, you had, while the power that be were telling us to stay on lockdown, it's for your own good, social distance, and all of those things. Meanwhile, our churches were not permitted to be open. But at the same time, you had abortion clinics and you had the liquor stores. They were allowed to be open during the pestilence crisis. Hmm? Did that make sense? How many of those current preachers on YouTube today publicly preach and expose this abomination and say, I'm going to stand up for the truth of God. Did they stand up for God? Or were they following the Pope, the order of the Pope and uh, the religious leaders? Like for example, on the screen, this is Elder Wilson doing that crisis. Did he agree? with Babylon that it's okay to close the churches down and open the liquor stores and also open up the abortion clinic, even open those places where people can go for a lap dance. Was he in agreement with that? Yes. 
at the very beginning of the crisis. Ted Wilson, again on the screen, he was promoting appropriate, this is a direct quote from him, appropriate social distancing. And then he counseled seven Adventists to use the muzzle. And remember during that time, they were telling us social distancing six feet apart. And if you calculate that, that's 666. You see? 666. Now, listen to the video in question where Ted Wilson was counseling us to wear the Babylonian muzzle to follow the Pope's order. Listen carefully. Play that clip. I'm glad to make contact with you this week, with you, our wonderful church members around the world. God has protected and cared for His church. And by God's grace, you have been protected this week. Be of good courage in the Lord. We will get through this. And you'll have opportunities in total member involvement to interact with people using your mask and appropriate social distancing. And you'll have opportunities in total member involvement to interact with people using your mask and appropriate social distancing. Maybe there's a church member, an elderly person who can't get food. Maybe you can help them. Maybe there's someone who needs a mask and you know where to get one and you can try and help them. Maybe there are those who have have some specific some need, specific need and, somehow and somehow you can encourage you can them. You can at least can call, at call least them on the call phone, on the phone and, give and give them a word, a word of, encouragement. of encouragement. Now, the same Babylonian muzzle that he was promoting, and probably still promoting today, we know now, and as we knew that back then, it's not healthy for anyone to be wearing those things constantly. We were not trained to wear those things. Yet, brothers and sisters, on the screen, go to the next slide. You have this preacher on the left from the Ken Hurst SDA Church. Now, this is him as well on the right. Now, this is not me putting this muzzle over his face. And we're gonna get into this a little bit more. Whose order they were following? Wh whose order? That is not the order of Jesus Christ to promote the health message because this thing is a hazard to the body. It is causing so many problems, lung problems, especially among young children even uh, has led to the destruction of many. And there you have it back to the screen. That is that church doing the Shemdemic crisis. That preacher on the left wearing this cross, as you could see on the left there, this Babylonian cross on his video that he made against me. Babylonian cross flashing this. Who wears cross? Do we as seven Adventists promote crosses? Listen to what Spirit of Prophecy says. Papists place crosses. Papists do what? Place crosses upon their churches, upon their altars, and upon their garments, just like that preacher there. Upon their garments. Everywhere is seen the insignia of the cross. Everywhere it is outwardly honored and exalted. But the teachings of Christ are buried beneath a mass of senseless traditions, false interpretations, and rigorous exactions. The Savior's words concerning the bigoted Jews apply with still greater force to the rummish leaders. They bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Matthew 23, verse 4, Jesus said, Conscientious souls are kept in constant what? Terror or fear. And that is exactly what the Babylonian mask is about, to keep you in fear. Fearing the wrath of an offended God, while the dignitaries of the church are living in luxury and sensual pleasure. During the pestilence crisis, they told us to social distancing, wear the muzzles. Meanwhile, as Peter Prophecy says here, the power that be, the Jesuits, Rome, Pope of Rome, WEF, Klaus Schwab, 
and all of those criminals were living in luxury and sensual pleasure. Meanwhile, they made the whole world to think, to believe that there was such a monster mutating out there. We need to stay away from, stay home, don't do anything. They were using us as their slaves, their pets. Meanwhile, God had given us our wor uh, his word and he said, if the son hath made you free, ye shall be free in indeed. If you have been made free by Christ Jesus, why being or allow yourself to become slave to men? Well, notice the next picture on the screen, which is an abomination. You can see I'm going to show you this in a little bit, in, in, a, in a video, in some videos as well. Wait for it. This is again the Kenhurst Seventh-day Adventist Church following Elder Wilson order. And this preacher on the left, you could see the arrow on the right pointing at his face, wearing this muzzle. We're going to see that in, in a little bit more. Let's move on. Go to the next picture. The next picture, again, this is one of the members, of that same church, leading the flock there in song service and wearing this Babylonian muz muzzle. Whose order is this to do this? It is the order that came from Rome. and. Uh, Ted Wilson, the next picture, again, from the same church, again, her Seventh-day Adventist church. This lady is wearing a shield. You can see that clearly. She's wearing a shield, and at one point, she was also wearing the mask while at church. They have made the church of God, doing the pestilence, a place of, I don't know how to describe this, but it did not look like a place where God himself was there. Can you imagine coming to a seven Adventist church, walking into a seven Adventist church, and people are socially distancing themselves and wearing muzzle? You're like, where, where is God? Now, here's the point. Was God there doing the, those church services, wearing a mask as well? Hmm? Was it God's will for his people to be in fear and terror, to follow the Pope's order? Was it God's will? Well, let me play the next clip for you as you're going to see this lady speaking from the pulpit of that church wearing the Babylonian muzzle. Watch. You can see her there with the shield and holding the Babylonian muzzle as well. And you can see the date this video was taken. And by the way, they took that video from their website, but I was able to uh, copy it before, or their YouTube channel, I was able to copy it before it was taken down. You could see her clearly there with the shield over her face. I wonder what's the monster? What was the monster that was out there for us to make the church look like a circus? Babylon. And again, those are the preachers now that are coming out and think and telling us they are present truth as you can see on the screen yet when the crisis came they conform not to the word of god but to babylon to babylon and now they are gossiping as the conference has lunch a a, a new way of attack upon amazing word ministry to destroy amazing word ministries Making sure that uh, Amazing Word Ministries and Emmanuel don't resurface using those preachers. And another one from Africa, making eight minute videos to, to bring about this attack. Meanwhile, where were they during the pestilence crisis? Were they standing up and feeding the flock of God? Were they doing that? Notice the next video. Let's play the, ne the next video there. So This is at the church. Look at this guy. Not sure if he's one of the pastors there, because they have a few pastors. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, 
visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. There's the preacher there with his muzzle. There he is again with his muzzle. Whose order they were following? And then they're going to tell you that they are present truth? No. When the flock needed present truth, what were you doing? You comply to the Babylonian requirement where the muzzle is inside the church. It's one thing if you're going out to wear the muzzle, okay? Or you go to a private store or place, they require you to wear the muzzle. It's, that's one thing. But inside of the church of God, wearing this muzzle, and he, he was not just wearing any kind of muzzle. It looks like he was wearing the N95. Meaning, the fear was so great, the terror, the panic was so great, that he had to make sure that he safe, follow the mandate. Just like, go to the next slide with me. Just like we read here, exploring the poisons, freedom, and loving, quote unquote, our neighbor. Ganun dia, PhD, permanent head damage, director of the public affairs and religious liberty of the General Conference of Seven Adventists, explore the nature and scope of religious freedom. And then he said, while explicitly supporting your choice, your individual choice, then the up said, that personal conviction is not corporate responsibility. And he called the pestilence crisis a public health issue, a life and death issue, not one of religious liberty. In other words, you have to obey and follow the mandate. Well, those so-called preachers present truth now from Ken or Seven Adventist Church, how did they respond to that? Notice the, the, this slide here on the screen. Again, another member from that church, while speaking before the congregation, wearing this muzzle. And keep in mind what that meant. The power that be gave us the muzzle, as you are looking at this picture on the screen once again. Power that be gave us the muzzle so that we can be in terror, in panic, in fear, thinking that there is a monster really out there that we need to avoid. And the safest way to avoid this monster is by following the order that came from Babylon because they wanted you to be tainted, to be defiled by the Babylonian poison. Let's watch the next clip. Go to the next clip. Notice carefully. Again, the preacher. The preacher there, the preacher on the screen, right there. This is fear. This is fear mongering. All of them. In that church, wearing the muzzle, what was the monster that they were afraid of out there and making the church circus? Following the order of Babylon and uh, Ted Wilson. And, oh, brothers, this is an abomination. Notice the next slide here on the screen. This is the preacher who is now coming across as if he's a present truth preacher, that all of a sudden he cares about the flock. Look at him wearing the N95 mask. What happened during that time to the health message that God gave us? Where was that health message? As I was scrolling through their, through their YouTube, going back to those videos, not one of those preachers were men enough to stand up and expose the crisis. As a matter of fact, go back to this slide again. Instead of exposing the Babylonian pestilence, 
were they doing? They were conforming themselves to it. Bringing that same fear inside of the church. Those men are only now brave to make videos on YouTube because there's nothing going on. That's what it is. There's nothing going on. They see it's an opportunity to make money. Monetize YouTube channel. That's their opportunity. And, and they want you to support them. Be, uh, now things are easy. Let's say God allow another crisis to come again. They will conform to the requirements of the conference. Which requirements came from Rome? They will conform to those things. They do not care about the flock. They only care about themselves. This is why the Bible says, go to the book of Isaiah with me, chapter 56. Isaiah 56. Notice carefully with me. The, the new attack is, okay, let's destroy him. Let's go into gossips, rumors. We heard about him. He's doing personal life. But when the flight needed those men the most to stand up for the truth, what did they do? They were wearing the Babylonian muzzle. They probably, that preacher, I don't know, don't care to know either, probably took the Babylonian poison himself. Because if he was so fearful, go back, uh, show that slide again on the screen. If he was so fearful to wear that heavy mask on his face, that means he probably took the poison as well. Go back now to Isaiah chapter 56. The Bible says in verse 10, his watchmen are blind. His watchmen are blind. Leave, leave, take that back to the screen as I'm reading this. Put that back on the screen so they can see that as I'm reading this. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all what? Dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Those men are what? What did the Bible describe them as? Dumb dogs. They cannot bark. What does that mean? When the crisis came for them to bark, to sound the alarm on the walls of Zion. What did they do? No, they said to Zion, they said to God's people, no, 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 no. This is not the time for, for this. Nothing is happening. Let's follow the orders that came from the general conference, that came from Ted Wilson, which also means let's follow the orders that came from the Jesuits. That's what they did. Again, show, the, show, show that on the screen. This is a dumb dog. He did not, it's not me calling him that. The Bible says, those watchmen are dumb dogs. There's, they do not know how to bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yea, they are greedy dogs. That's why they monetize their channels, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way. Everyone for his gain from his quarter. You see, standing up for the truth at the time of the pestilence. Hey, was too much. I might lose this. And that and the other, I better conform. And I'll wait for another time and I'll pretend to be a watchman on the wall. I'll pretend to be a shepherd. Those are dumb dogs, brothers and sisters. Play the next clip. Notice carefully. This is at the church. Notice that man who just passed. He was not wearing the muzzle, was not afraid to wear the muzzle. But then here's the so-called preacher there. With his N95 mask. Look at that. Proudly wearing his muzzle there. The gentleman who passed by was not afraid. Look at him on the right. Good morning, happy Sabbath. And this is the present truth, preacher? It has been quite a long time. This this is the man. And from the uh Ken Horse, Seven Day Adventist. Uh, uh, YouTube ac account, a new video. Oh, let's, we need unity we, uh, with unity with the conference. No, we cannot. Self-supported groups cannot be in unity with the conference. The disciples were not in unity with the conference. And I'll talk more about that. But that is the same so-called preacher wearing, making, wearing this muzzle inside of the church, making the church look like a confused place where God does not dwell. You think God requires, again, show that on the screen. Leave that picture on the screen. You think God would want us to make this church look like a circus? Hmm? We cannot identify who you are? Well, it gets even worse. Notice the next clip. Go to the next clip. Play that for them. Notice carefully in the next clip. Watch carefully what you're going to find here on 
the, the, the next clip here. How faithful this man was, even led his family into the same fear mongering came from Babylon. Listen, notice. There he is there, sitting down, doing church service. Which God they were serving here? Hmm? This was this was not Jehovah God. Perfect love, the Bible says. Cast out all fear. Stand up, preacher. Stand up and expose the Babylonian sorceries. Stand up and expose the pestilence. But those men were like dumb dogs, as the Bible says. They had forgotten how to bark. There he is, going up and uh, promoting the fear mongering causing the church to think that there's something really going on we need to, to go back we need to go and follow babylon and take the poison oh brothers and sisters wow meanwhile jesus said in matthew chapter 10 notice carefully should we listen to those men no brothers and sisters they're going to deceive you they did not follow the lamb whithersoever he was taking them during the pestilence crisis. What makes you think that with the Sunday law crisis that they are going to follow the Lamb? Notice carefully. We read in Matthew chapter 10. They have a fear of man. Matthew 10, Jesus says in verse 26. Listen carefully. Jesus says, Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the house stops. And fear not them which does what? Kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him. Whom should we fear? God. Fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Such a time as this. When Babylon brought this new religion, this pestilence religion, and still fear and to force us to worship, we should have remembered that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We should have remembered what we were told, why God raised Ellen White and gave us the spirit of prophecy, gave us the health message, the right arms of the gospel, because God had he was preparing us, I should say, was preparing his people for a health crisis that was coming. As Jesus said, there shall be pestilences. And Revelation 18, 23 says that Babylon will deceive the world by her sorceries, which means the administering of drugs, her poison. Christ says, fear me who is able to destroy both body and soul. In hell, not the fear of men. Those three Hebrew boys were not afraid to be thrown into the fiery furnace. They yielded their bodies as living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. You see, the Bible tells us also in Isaiah 59, go to Isaiah 59, verses 19 through 20. At such a time as this, this is what we were supposed to do and help the flock to realize. Isaiah 59, the Bible says in verse 19, So shall they fear the name of the Lord. Notice, fear who? The name of the Lord. From the west and his glory, from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall do what? Come in like a flood. What must happen at that time? The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The enemy came with its fear as a flood. But God said to his people, we need to lift up the standard. Yield not unto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge and he shall direct your path. But what path did they choose? They choose the path of Babylon, promoting fear mongering. Again, put that slide on the screen with this man proudly standing before the church as shepherd of the flock promoting the babylonian poison and the, the mask 
Israel, the Babylonian muzzle. Meanwhile, the Bible went on to say, again, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him, and the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. For me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, hence from henceforth and forever. Where Babylon said, forget about what God says, shut down the churches. And when the churches were allowed to reopen, you had to social distancing yourself. Where the muzzles, and and we can say that uh, oh we have faith, God will deliver us. Well, you failed the first the first test, but God is merciful. Amen. We all fall short of His glory. We all have sin and fallen short of the glory of God. But now He calls us to repentance. Repent, brothers and sisters. We fell. The first, the first test. We follow the order that came from Babylon instead of the order that came from Jesus Christ. We fell. We pent. I don't have anything personal against those preachers that, that have failed to bark like a dog. But since God is merciful, He's calling me to repentance. He's calling all of us to repentance. So the message here is to repent because, go to the next slides. Babylon is still instilling fear again of another pestilence from New York Post. As it says, bird flu pandemic could be a hundred times worse than the COVID pestilence crisis. So what will those preachers do? Will they trust Jesus now? Will they stand up for Jesus or will they go back and wearing the muzzles? Listen to what Spirit of Prophecy went on to say. With your herald, December 26, 1912, while Christ would lead his servants out into the highways, into the homes of men to seek and save the lost. What is the enemy doing? Satan is employing his agents to lead souls to where? To ruin. His, that is Satan's, most effective agents for this work. Who are they? Are those whose names are where? On the church records, but who fell of a record in the Lamb Book of Life? Pause, oh brothers and sisters, who are Satan's most effective agents? Go back to the previous slides. Put that slide on that screen again. Any preacher during that time that stood before the church wearing the Babylonian muzzle, as you can see on the screen wearing the Babylonian muzzle was, whether they knew it or not, was one of the most effective agents of Satan to deceive God's people because they stood up before the congregation and did something like that publicly, openly. They instilled fear in the mind of Seventh-day Adventists and led them to the slaughterhouse of Babylon to take the Babylonian poisons. They were, again, whether they knew it or not, they were just like Eve was the vessel that Satan used to get to Adam. Likewise, those preachers, Satan used them to get to the flock, to cause the flock to follow a different path, to cause the flock to reject the health message that God gave to us from the Bible and Spirit Prophecy. Instead, they caused the flock to accept the Babylonian counterfeit health message. Let's go back to the screen as Spirit of Prophecy went on to tell us here. Once again, Satan's most effective agents for this work are those whose names are on the church records, but who fell of a record in the Lamb's Book of Life. There are many who are blind leaders of the blind and leaders and those who are led will, what happened to them, will come to destruction at last. Meanwhile, brothers and sisters, God wants you and I to prepare for the final battle. To prepare as Ephesians chapter 6 says, put ye on the whole armor of God. Stand up and ye shall see the salvation of the Lord. Isaiah 8. For example, says this, listen carefully in Isaiah 8, 
beginning in verse 11. Isaiah 8, verse 11. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. Why? Saying, say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy, neither do water, fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. They said, no, 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 let's follow the crowd. But God says, no, don't fear them, stand up. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself and let him be your fear and let him be your dread. Oh, brothers and sisters. But those preachers were a stumbling block to the flock. Now, all of a sudden, they are because, you know, we have gone back to somewhat a normal. Oh, now, all of a sudden, they are on YouTube pretending that they were always present truth. When the flock needed those false shepherds the most, were they helping the, the flock to stand up for the truth? To lift up the standard? No. And he shall be for a sanctuary. Ooh, sanctuary temple of the Holy Spirit. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for again and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared. That is a trap. And be taken. But as for us, brothers and sisters, we are told we need to stand fast for Jesus Christ. When the enemy comes in like a flood, uh, as of um, flood, it is at such a time as this, we are told we need to lift up the standard. Let's have a word of prayer. Our God, our Father, which art in heaven. Father, over and over again throughout the pages of scriptures, you have shown us how the enemy is attacking and ready to devour. But at the same time, while many have bowed to the demand of the enemy because of fear of losing their lives, we have the examples as well of a few who stood up fast. As Spirit of Prophecy says, it is in a crisis that character is revealed. During the crisis, as we just saw on the screen, those preachers were following the order of popery of the conference, wearing the muzzle at church. They showed their true nature, their true character, that they did not care for the flock. But you want us now to learn from those lessons, to learn from what we failed to do during the crisis. We pray, Father, that you would help us now as we repent of our sins, of all known and unknown sin. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.